eradicate sledge. I'm actually delighted now to be joined uh, by Bill Feige from uh, the Gates Foundation. Bill, thank you ever so much indeed for taking the time to uh, join us today. Now, can we start off? What are some of the lessons that we've learned from the eradication of smallpox? I think the lessons from smallpox eradication have to do with very simple things. Things do not happen by chance, particularly good things. And so you have to have a plan, an objective, figure out how to do that. Number two, you have to know the truth. And we would oftentimes like not to know how much smallpox there is in an area but you simply have to have a surveillance system that provides the truth if you're going to get rid of it. Number three, it requires a coalition to do anything. None of us can do, any, do something on our own anymore, probably never could, but particularly now, we need a coalition. And so the leaders in global health are not defined by a title, that is head of WHO or, or head of UNICEF or something. They're they're defined by the people who can put together a coalition that actually works. So those are some of the big lessons, but I think we also have to have optimism that this actually worked. We got rid of smallpox in the entire world. It is possible to have a global objective and reach that objective. So you're saying we've eradicated uh, smallpox, but if you look around at some of the big killers today, pneumonia, for example, diarrhea, that we've got uh, vaccines for, what do we need to do to eradicate those diseases? First, the vaccine history is really very recent. I have the baby book that my mother bought when I was born. It lists only two vaccines, diphtheria, toxoid, and smallpox vaccine. vaccine. So the vaccine era, which now in this country is about 18 vaccines, and there are another dozen that are used different times, different places, that's all in my lifetime that that's developed. So we are still becoming accustomed to how do we use that. The vaccines are more expensive now, and smallpox vaccine was very cheap. Even measles vaccine and polio vaccine are, are very inexpensive. The new vaccines for rotavirus diarrhea for uh, pneumonia. These are more expensive. But the good news is that we're figuring out how to organize in the world so that there's a fund that can provide these vaccines for poor kids, the Gavi Fund. And even with the economic downturn, the recent uh, pledges have been for over $4 billion for these vaccines. So I'm very encouraged with that. But that's not enough. You have to have a delivery mechanism. And we are quite good at delivering ice cream and soda to even remote villages. We're particularly good at delivering beer any place. But we're not very good at delivering vaccines to the last mile. And so it's one of the barriers. The Gavi Fund says to countries, you're eligible for these expensive vaccines subsidized if you can demonstrate that you actually are delivering the other vaccines. Bill, thank you, but what do you do about those countries that aren't covered by Gavi, the middle income countries? Well, I think that our objective has to be always the children not being covered, and even middle income uh, countries, even high income countries have poor children, and there have to be mechanisms. The Gavi Fund takes care of a huge problem that no one was addressing. But now we have to look at, uh, as we're solving that, we have to look at what happens with middle income co uh, countries and even rich countries. How do we get to the poor children there? So this is a problem. There's no question about it. Bill, that's very interesting. You talked about being optimistic, and, and, and I'm sure that's right. But do you, think, do you think there's the political will now to do something about this? Well, it's one of the nice things that we know every global health decision is based on a political decision. Therefore, the politicians have to be part of this. In the last 10 years, global health has become a political issue. Politicians can see a benefit to supporting global health. So I'm very optimistic that solutions that were not possible 10 years ago are now going to be possible. Bill, thank you ever so much indeed for taking the time to talk to us today. We really appreciate it.